Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, we started in a previous video making a new one of these wedges for the steam locomotive at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. It's a 1917 Balkan Ironworks 040 narrow gauge locomotive that we run at the museum, uh, usually on Saturdays and occasionally during other events. Have a little one mile loop that goes around the, the, the museum grounds and it's a, one of the main attractions at the museum. And a little while ago we had a little issue with this little wedge in the bearing on one of the connecting rods. I've already started the project. We did a part one on this. This is gonna be part two. We're gonna finish it up if you haven't already. I would suggest you go back and take a look at the first part. Uh, if you have already seen it, continue on and we're gonna finish making this piece up in this episode. So we got our blank pretty much cut out to size. We got our hole through there. Next step that I wanna do is to cut these radiuses on the on the edges here. And, and this is again the original piece and you can see where those are in there to give some clearance in the top and the bottom. So when you adjust this thing all the way up and down, it uh, fits in these radiuses. Now one thing I'm gonna make a note of here and some of you guys probably have already seen this on the video, but this bracket that holds this over the years and years of use, basically this wedge is here and you just got you know, a, a lot of force has been put on the back side of this over a long period of time, and it has actually got a little bit of a bow in this. In fact, if you look here on the bottom, you can even see the bottoms have flared out a little bit, and it's pushed out. And I measured it a while ago. You can kind of see the gap in there where it goes up. When it goes up to the top, it kind of fits back in there. When I cut out my blank, I took into account this extra width in here. And I'm just going to say right now that when we get to the point of um, putting these radiuses on the new one, I'm going to have to come in here and do some massaging on the grinder to actually get this where it properly fits in the back, all the way at the top and the bottom, where we've got good contact all the way to the back. Previously, we actually had to put some shims behind this to kind of take up that extra space, and I'm trying to avoid that in uh, the, the new piece that I'm making. And basically we're just, we're, we're compensating for the wear or whatever you wanna call this, the, the deflection in this part. Now I could, I guess, make a new part. I could try to straighten this. We discussed that and basically we said, no, we're gonna leave this piece alone. Uh, the obvious thing is, is come in here and try to straighten it out. But the, this piece here, even though we got this little deflection in the back, it fits the locomotive perfectly. Uh, we've got two pins here that actually are tapered bolts that snug all this thing together, the, the bearing slide in this. All of that is perfect. And the fear is, is if we go in here and try to uh, deform this or reform this back to its original shape that we're gonna mess up the geometry somewhere else. And while it's not ideal, I, I think that it's probably just the best to leave well enough alone and uh, work with what we got. Again, I probably could make a whole new bracket and at some point in time we may attempt to do something like that, but honestly, if it's not giving us a problem, we're probably just gonna leave the original part on here. So, enough said on that. Let's get back over here to our piece. And uh, basically, we've measured that radius. It's a half inch radius. I've got a radius gauge here. What I wanna do is just go ahead and um, I'm just gonna scribe the, the, the radiuses that I want to cut on the part here. Again, this just kind of gives me a visual guide as to where we're wanting to end up. So that should give us enough ink. And we'll come in here, lay the radius gauge up on there, and then using my Randy Richards scribe here, just put that right there, do it on both sides. All right, that gives me something to work with there. Now, when I made these parts before, the way I cut these radiuses is I actually set it up on the middle machine on a rotary table where the center of the radius was on the center of the rotary table and I just basically rolled this thing around an end mill and it made a really nice uh, radius. It, it worked good, it was a good method. Um, the downside that is, is it takes a lot of time to set it up. I've decided this time that I'm gonna use a contour milling function 
on my digital readout on the milling machine and basically have it navigate that radius and just cut it out. It's not going to be a perfect radius uh, because we're going to be basically just making you know, X and Y moves to do it around there. But because I know that I'm going to have to come back on the grinder and do some finished grinding on this to clean it up, I think that it's going to be fine to do it that way. Basically doing this mode on the digital readout on my mill machine kind of simulates what a uh, CNC mill would do. Uh, but the steps on the CNC mill would be a lot smaller and, and you'd end up with a, a much smoother finish uh, than what I'm going to be able to do manually on my DRO. But anyway, let's go over and get this part set up to do that cut and we'll go ahead and get these radiuses cut out. So guys, what we're going to do here is we're going to try to cut this radius again, but in order to set my digital readout up, the first thing I need to do is find the center of the radius. So I'm going to use my edge finder. We'll come in here, find the two edges, move it over the right amount until we get basically centered over that line. So let's go. I've got my DRO here. Hopefully I won't get in your way too much where you can see what's going on. But we're going to come in here. We'll start by finding this outside edge. With this edge finder, we just come in until it scoots over. Right, hang on. Do that again. And I'm going to zero that out. Again, my edge finder is a half inch in diameter, so I need to do half of that, which is 250 thousandths. I need to move my radius, which is a half inch. So we need to go a total of 750 thousandths. So we'll just scoot it over here to, I uh, went past it, 750, right there, and I'm going to zero that out. All right, now we're going to come in here, find this edge. Zero there. And we're going to come in 750 thousandths. Alright, so now, right now we've got zero, zero is right in the center of that radius. Let me change tools out and we'll get ready to start cutting. So I've got my cutter in here. This is a one inch diameter roughing mill. This is actually one I think that I got from Dennis Nolan over at Niagara Tools, uh, sent me a while back. Uh, we're going to come in here and set up our digital readout to cut this radius and let's just do it. So. I'm over here, we got the digital readout, and what I'm going to do is go into the contour arc mode, which is uh, going to be pushing this button. I am on my zero, zero coordinate. So again, I got my cutter right over the center of my radius. I'm going to hit my button here, and it's going to say, first thing it wants to do is tell me where zero, zero is. I'm there, so I don't have to put any numbers. I'm just going to hit, we're on zero, zero. I'm just going to hit enter, and then it's going to get enter again, and that has position this over zero, zero. It's now asking me for the radius that I want to cut. And I know my radius is a half inch, so I'll put in 0 0.5 and I'll hit enter. Starting angle, this is a little confusing. Uh, you have to kind of know the coordinates you're working off here, but I know that I'm going to be starting on this side and going to this side. This is 270 degrees. This is 180 degrees. So I'm going to put in 270, 270, enter. Add for my ending angle. Again, that's going to be 180. Enter. It's going to ask for my tool diameter. That's a one inch diameter tool, so I'm going to put in one. And then it's going to ask, do you want to do this on a, uh, an internal, external, or a center of radius? So do you want your cut to be on the, if you're cutting an inside radius or an outside radius, or do you want it to go down the center? Now I'm doing an external cut. So I need to go external cut, say enter. And then it's going to ask me how much of a cut do I want to take each time. And I'm just roughing this out. So I'm going to do 200,000. So I'm just going to put in 0.2 and enter. And what that's going to do now is it's going to bring up the coordinates that I need to dial into for my first cut. And basically I'm just going to index through these 
and I'm going to just steer my mill to where, where it says zero, zero. So we're going to start, we'll come in here, we're going to move out one inch, which is the diameter of the cutter, which just should put us, should us, which should put us right on the edge of the part. So we're at zero, zero. I'm going to start my mill. And I'm going to lower my cutter down. And I'm going to go to my first coordinate, which is just hit this button. And again, it's going to steer me right there to it. So I'm going to start on the X. I'm going to take this over to zero. And then I'm going to pull in this way to zero. Go to my next coordinate. one radius cut and again we're going to finish that up on the grinder should have gone just a little bit deeper but that's just paper thin all right there you go there's the process we're going to flip it over to the other side and be back all right guys i took this over to the grinder i cleaned it up i did a little bit more relieving again back here in the tops so that this would uh fit in those corners a little bit better uh, with that deflection in there and I think that's going to be fine. So now what I want to do is go ahead and we need to mill this uh, angle. I've already just laid this up on here and transferred a line on there and we're going to go over to the milling machine now, get that cut and just basically cut to that scribe line and on that angle and I think we'll do, get, be done and to do the angle guys I'm just going to use the original as a template so it'll plop up on here like such and when I do I got a flat angle across the top so I'll just stack both of those in the vise and no special measurements required. We're just going to copy the angle we got. All right, we got our block set up in here, angle set. Just come up here and touch off on here. cutter is going to barely be wide enough to do what I want to do here. I 
All right, let's uh, knock this thing out. I think we've got her done. So here we go. One new part done. I think that's going to work just fine. So uh, let's uh, get this installed. up over it there we go and we can adjust that wedge by moving that up and down this bearing half will go on that side and then this part connects to the connecting rod so one train repair done well there you go guys one steam locomotive bearing wedge repair complete. We'll get this back out to the museum, let them get this back on to the steam locomotive because I believe they're going to be running it tomorrow. So uh, just in time delivery. Uh, but get this on here and I think we're done. So with that, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, appreciate you coming and taking a look at what we're doing. Uh, you may want to go back and take a look at the previous video that I had done about three years ago where I did one of these. Um, I purposely did things a little bit differently this time, using some different uh, tools and different techniques, just again to show that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, and there's really no right or wrong way to do any of this as long as you get the proper end result. So with that, we're going to sign off. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.